Hello everyone, okay. I am Sony from the English Wikipedia and my talk is about newcomer retention. So as uh, you guys will be a mixture of experienced and non-experienced Wikipedians, I will alter the talk accordingly. So this is a very basic overview. Before I begin, I'll just give a small disclaimer like everybody here uh, who has been giving talks, they are talking about what they have done. But in my case, it's not just what I have done, but what my community has done, which is more important. So everything I will be talking about is, most of the stuff is what other edit uh, editors have been working on. So basically, what is, like, what is the current state for newcomers on the English Wikipedia? So this is based on this paper by Aaron Halfaker, who currently works in Wikimedia Foundation which is the rise and decline of an open collaboration system. So, as you can see, very clearly the number of active editors is decreasing. Like it grew from present 4 and from present 8 onwards it's decreasing. And we want to know why. So, the reason for that is that when you look at the desirable newcomers, the newcomers who are good, they were starting to fall off. Like the number of uh, newcomers, I mean, uh, in 2003 to 6, they were like 60% uh, of them were considered desirable. But later on, it's at 40%. But even at 40%, it's remained consistent. So it's not a severe drop considerably, and yet we do not have as many people joining it. And why is that? That is because the number of newcomers who are surviving is lesser. So anybody who has been marked as seen good or somebody who has been useful, they, uh, those type of editors for the project after project 6, 7 have just you know suddenly stopped editing for some reason and we do not know why. So the proportion of desirable newcomers who edit for 2 months is now 10% from what it was originally 30 to 40%. And for that we uh, like Adam looked at the reasons and these are one of the reasons. The first is that newcomers are getting reverted very quickly. So I make an edit, I make my first edit and somebody just immediately says undo, this is a bad edit. And that has increased very drastically in the recent years. Similarly, a lot of the communication that is happening right now on English Wikipedia is automated. So now uh, usually what we have is that editors are not uh, using tools to you know send messages. And suddenly we have this growth where everybody is using bots or tools or something like that to give a standard template message. And the last reason is basically the length of the rules. Like the number of actual rules, guidelines and policies in the English Wikipedia has remained pretty consistent and actually decreased also. But the number of essays, informal rules that you know the community sort of implements but it's not a rule per se, they have increased very drastically. So even though they are not like formal rules, anybody who wants to contribute to the project will have to understand these rules uh, in order to you know contribute productively. And that is what the problem is. So essentially to uh, say that the state of newcomers in NWIKI is that the number of desirable editors is shrinking, more editors are getting turned away and this is probably because of they are getting rewarded. There are automated messages and the rule set has just drastically increased. So that was the first thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing I want to talk about is also by the same guy, Aaron, which is Snuggle. So after realizing that the newcomers are going away, he decided to make a tool which is to observe and support them. So what it is, it is, is the basic tool that you know any experienced editor can use. And you can see it uh, here. So what I will do as an experienced editor is I will log on to this and I will just check out all these newcomers. Like these are all the newcomers sorted in terms of who is the most desirable of the newcomers according to the algorithm. And from those newcomers I can check out their edits. I can check out who has messaged what on the top pages. So if you notice this guy has been uh, getting his article deleted a lot of time. On the other hand, Michael of the World has been welcomed once to the tea house and welcomed and has many edits that you can see so he is probably very productive as an editor. 
So this way we can basically the experienced editors can proactively try to find these newcomers who are you know useful to the project and help guide them. So yeah, so basically the entire interface allows you to send a message to their talk page from the tool itself and you can even send templated e-house messages or whatever. So it's basically a tool to identify the desirable newcomers and it's meant for experienced editors to proactively find the good editors. It's an easy interface so that you know you can uh, check out the edits and everything about the user that needs you to that you need to identify what type of editor they are and allows you to message and invite them. So that's snug. The third thing I want to talk about is basically adoption programs. So basically these are the measures that we are taking to make sure that these newcomers continue editing on Wikipedia. So adoption program is basically when one editor who is experienced says I am adopting this newcomer and I will teach them how to edit Wikipedia. So this is one of the standard adoption pages which is adopt a user. So basically all the main rules and principles are of Wikipedia editing is explained here and it can be, it ranges from editor to editor so it can be a very basic primer of you know just the essentials or it can be very advanced lessons. So this is one of the standard lesson plans from uh, one of the ex ARPCOM members which is the bomb that turned. So you can see uh, the lessons go from introduction to Wikipedia to templates to deletion policies to wiki markup, dispute resolution and what not. So this is one type of adoption program. Similarly, there is uh, the late user Jackson Peebles. Uh, when he, he also made his own adoption program and he interactively added videos and a course description and everything else to it. So that is another sort of adoption program. And then there are other users who uh, try to be very minimalistic like Yun Shui is another experienced editor on the English Wikipedia. So he basically has this adoption program as just a very clean and neat set of rules and everything. So you know you just need to read one or two paragraphs and if you read it in detail you understand everything about it. So as I am saying basically adoption programs are there for experienced editors to teach those Wikipedians who have a basic idea about wiki markup or something. So if you have already been contributing for like 10, 20, 50 edits, then you will have a basic idea of what is the top page, how do you make edits and uh, what are the type of edits to be made and then another editor does not have to you know, teach you about everything like how to save, how to preview and they can just tell you about the content side of the adoption and that is what primarily it's used for. But right now it's very destructured. So what about the users who have no idea about anything about you know how to even start editing, where is the edit button and all of that. So for that, there is another program, uh, another measure called the Wikipedia Adventure that was started by Jake Aldrovitz. So this one, basically this measure focuses on absolutely beginner level editors. Like you do not have to know anything and you can still uh, get to learn F, uh, all the basics about Wikipedia editing from a game perspective. So because it makes it a, as a game, it's also very interactive and easy for everyone. And anybody who does not know how to edit Wikipedia in this room, you can try it out at uh, end.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash wikipedia colon twa. Like if you do not have an idea about editing, this is where you can start and it's very easy and very useful. So I'll just briefly run you through it. So this is how it looks like. It's basically a game where they are talking, there are seven missions and they are telling you about what is Wikipedia and they will just you know, guide you through all the basics. So it's like, there is a sample page that is made for you uh, as a sandbox to try it on and it's like what's new and it's talking about how the history of the articles allows you to see the articles and it has even more interactive features like uh, you should be making this edit, you should add that reference. So it's pretty interesting in that way. So yeah, as I was saying, there are all these missions that are there and you have your statistics about you know how many missions you have completed and uh, everything like that.
So this is a summary from Jake's individual engagement grant, which basically talks about how effective this was. So roughly, I believe a hundred users or so uh, were uh, involved in the pilot project of this uh, game, and uh, basically how people came to know about the game is they were invited to the uh, to interact with it and all. So when he looked at the statistics, it turns out that the people who have been playing the game made 1.2 times more edits than a similar group which did not uh, play the game. And uh, they like for those uh, editors who were invited but did not play the game, it was uh, basically 1.9x more times. So it's like a massive increase in productivity for those. They were more likely to make more than 20 edits. The players also like enjoyed the game, and those who finished the game made the most number of edits. So that is a basic outline of the Wikipedia adventure, which basically presents everything in the form of a game. The penultimate one I want to talk about is Tea House, which is basically a very friendly and simple question-answer space for editors. So again, it was designed by Sarah Sperry and Jonathan Morgan and others, and it had a specific focus to be simpler than Wikimarta. So the basic structure of it is like this: there are hosts, which is experienced editors, and there are guests. And anybody who wants to ask a question can simply just click and ask, and it's designed to be friendly. So it, as you can see, there's a very nice and helpful ask a question button, and all of the questions are like right here, and. There are many uh, people who are answering the questions, so you get an answer almost immediately, like in an hour or two. So it's like very active. So, and even when you are asking a question, what, uh, what we have personally found is that the new editors, whenever they are asked to, you know, go through the entire wiki markup and everything, they are very confused. Like, it's not easy for anybody to just, you know, start editing like that. So, what Tea House focuses on is that you don't need to worry about the wiki markup. This is a box that will pop up. You just need to make your question right here. So it's very simple on that regard. And this again was the Tea House pilot survey. And from that, there are two major lessons learned, which is there are Tea House guests make more uh, make ten times the number of articleizers as non guests. Like there's a ten time increase for those who have been asking questions here. And global edits is seven times more, and even the content they add is two times more. So it's like massive changes. And even the guests who have come and asked questions and have been helped by the others, they're still editing and they have made much more recent edits. Like usually, what we find is that somebody comes, starts editing, and then you know eventually they just drop off, they lose interest, and they go away. In this case, people are still staying on. And that is basically the basic outline of Tea House, which is basically the friendly question and answer session. And the last one I want to talk about is the Wikipedia Co-op. It's uh, a personal project of mine. So the basic idea is that mentorship that was there in adoption programs and all, that was very unorganized. We wanted to make one friendly mentorship space on Wikipedia which along similar lines as the tea house, but to make sure that it is easy and simple. So it was done by Chris Schilling, user item robot, me and others. And basically, it's again similar to the other pro programs, we invited learners to the space so that mentors can adopt and mentor them. So this is basically how the co-op uh, looked. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, the basic outcomes of the co-op. Like, the, uh, what the co-op was designed to do is simply invite the newcomers, ask them that uh, come to this, we will match you with a mentor if you want and then once the mentor is matched, our work is done and the mentor can take on from there on and have the liberty to do whatever they want. So from the co-op we had about 52 active editors involved in the pilot program of one month and we had 86 individuals involved total, so there were about 20 to 23 uh, mentors. And there were 76 new images added and 428 articles added or improved. So, 
this is what the first month of the co-op was. Unfortunately, uh, what happened later on is that we had a lot of newcomers coming in. So if you see, I mean, uh, okay, so about the, the people who have been mentored, those who have mentored made basically about 60 edits or so, while those who were not mentored made about 24 edits. Those who were mentored made about 10 articles or edited 10 articles and those who were not mentored made about 3 article edits or so. Similarly, those who were... Yeah, uh, so this is the mean and median. So as you can see roughly, again there was a rough threefold increase in editing if we are proactive in asking the mentor, uh, asking the newcomers that come here, we will teach you how to edit and uh, uh, this is a friendly space. Unfortunately, what happened with the co-op is that we had uh, for only 25 to 30 mentors but every month we had about 50 newcomers coming in. So, by the, uh, by the time we had like uh, 2 months or 3 months of co-op, we had 150 newcomers and not as many mentors like 20 or 25. So the newcomers kept coming in and saying that we want to be taught how to edit Wikipedia, can you teach us? And we did not have enough mentors. So eventually we shut down the page and right now it's historical. It may be revived but right now this is how it is. So from here we learned like again that once we are proactive and we provide a simple interface, people are more than willing to edit and people learn how to edit much more rather than dropping off. And another thing that was the focus of this co-op is that the number of days somebody waits was drastically reduced. Like usually what happens is that you wait for 4 days, 5 days, you say that I want to be adopted, can anybody teach me? 4 days or 5 days you have to wait until somebody says, hey I want to adopt you. But usually by that time a lot of these editors are like, okay nobody is uh, talking to me, I'll just go away. Like people do not know that Wikipedia has such a long time frame for others to interact with each other. In co-op, the median waiting time was about 12 hours. So you make a page in the morning saying I want to be mentored, by the time it's night, somebody would have said hey I can be your mentor, what do you want to learn? So again, if you have an organized space, it can be a lot of help in making sure that nobody is left behind. And obviously the main uh, thing that we learned from the entire co-op project is uh, the reason why it's marked historical which is that we have quite a few number of uh, experienced editors who are willing to mentor but we have an even larger set of people who want to be mentored. It's like the number of people continues to grow and they keep on coming. So the basic takeaways from this presentation is this. From the first slide if you uh, remember, so uh, from the research paper I just want to note down that the editor base that we have is shrinking and newer editors are being turned away. But at the same time the number of editors who are good, who are desirable is very high and we need to be more proactive in engaging them. The, all the measures basically told us that whenever you have direct interaction with them, whenever you have a mentorship, they are uh, they contribute much more, it's very valuable. Obviously, I mean it's a thing that is obvious but still, simplicity is awesome. Every time we had a simple space, the efforts were much more and the contributions were much better. Well-designed spaces, like if you have a structure that is simple to understand for newcomers, it's always helpful. Well-designed tutorial and games can help a lot in interest and lastly and most importantly there is a lot of newcomers who want to be trained so if we want to stop the reduction of editor base we just need to tap into that base and tell them okay here's how to become an experienced editor and it will just continue on doing and that is all of my takeaways from the uh, from this slides thank you Anybody have any questions? I got this from my book from Uttar. Uh, but uh, the contents and photos are mine. But I, uh, but every time uh, one guy, Yamaguchi, 
he just remove here uh, the contents around the 5 uh, 19 kb he gave you some reasons We appreciate and, uh, your contribution, including your edits in Puttur, but we cannot accept original research, uh, regional uh, uh, research re uh, reference uh, to material such as facts, allegations, ideas and personal experiences, for which uh, no reliable published source exists. It uh, also encompasses co uh, combining published sources in a way to and play something to uh, that None of them explicitly. Uh, uh, okay, but we uh, we given uh, enough for uh, proposal for uh, the thing. Kind of. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about when I said that the edits are automated. What you got is an automated edit that was trying to tell you that you need more sources. I don't know if you added sources or not. For that, I will have to check your edits. But basically, some editor saw that you made a contribution where you did not provide the source. And he was trying to tell you that uh, you did not provide the source. No. Is it that he did not tell you that very well? Uh, even that uh, they remove the common images also. Yes, exactly. So uh, it's it's the same thing throughout the projects. Like uh, basically, uh, if you go to say the tea house. Uh, this is the link of the tea house. You can go there. It's a question and answer place. So if you have specific questions there, this is the best place to ask because here like there are 20 to 30 people who are waiting to answer questions. Right now if I give the answer, I will only give it from my experience, here there are 30 people. So in cases like yours when your article is being deleted or you do not understand the policy very well, this is the best place to go. Is that answer? Hey, what is happening? Puttur is a city, a small city. And uh, as a town, okay, it has this college, this building, and all those things you write. And for everything, they want some reference and all those things. And if we give that website of the same college, this is not a valid reference, okay, you have to give some other reference and all those things. And in another case, there is a factory called Campo in Puto. I am actually referring this case also. Okay. That Campo here taken the photo of that factory in his mobile or camera, IP camera and he has uploaded and added to that article about Campo. That they deleted saying that copyright violation. Okay. A photo of a factory taken by us, will it be a copyright violation? Okay, so two parts of the question is thus, okay this is uh, not quite related to the presentation but I know the answer so I will say it anyways. So basically again it is about communicating the exact rules and policies. Like I understand the policy so I can explain it to you. So sub, the factory case, I believe you took a photo of the factory, right? <laughs> ha, yeah, you took a photo of the factory. In that photo of the factory, was there any logos of the factory of there? Of course, yes. Yes. So that is a case where it might be a copyright violation or something. It's like logos are not supposed to be there on Wikimedia Commons if they can be helped. So I'm not sure if yeah, I, I am I thought it could be the same, yes. same issue, but what you do? Is the entire building is there and a small a corner logo that you master the logo and upload it? Yeah, so I'm not uh, sure exactly what is the case. So I would like to see the edits uh, he made. Like you can contact me later. My name is user Sony on English Wikipedia or you can just contact me anywhere I'll reply to you. So I am not sure of the exact so the like from my experience. It can either be that there was a lo the logo of the factory or it might be a copyright violation in terms of that the licensing was not specified. Like you have to specify that it is my own work or you have to specify that this image is available online publicly that, and I am uploading it from there. That we have been doing, we know that. Okay, so that, uh, that is not that the case, issue. That is not the issue. In that case, I will have to see the image to be sure about what is the problem. And for the second thing, the source and all. The thing is, again it's a matter of communication about what exactly the policy is. So the policy says that if you have primary sources, which is the basically the college website itself to talk about a college, 
then those can be used only for unambiguous facts like the college was established in this year the college has been uh, run by this administration but anything that relates to say more details like the college has uh, you know these programs and it has been working in this field and it's a leader and all of that you have to back them by secondary sources which is newspaper or other media so that might be a problem once again i will direct you to the tea house which is one place where you will get exact answers for whatever problems you will be facing and you can ask any of your questions second anyone else thank you